You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another interesting episode of Ask Drone You. As always, my name is Paul. My name is Rob. Super glad to be hanging out with you and thanking you very much for hanging out with us. Hopefully, we have some useful information for you. Definitely. Like talking about what to do if you've had a drone on the shelf for a while, you want to go fly it again, and you don't want to crash it, uh, which I actually have an interesting story about this. Uh, not related to our question, actually, but Tom was was emailing or texting me this weekend about how the battery test, uh, which is a part of the third rule of takeoff here at DroneU. Oh, uh, he put that in the community, too. Uh, yeah, and pretty much how it saved him from uh, crashing on multiple batteries because they had been stored and not cared for. And I'm telling you, that battery test is, uh, is so crucial. So i um, excited today to kind of answer this question regarding pulling out a bird off the shelf, how to get it up to date. I think that there are a couple of things to consider uh, when when you do do this. So I think it'll be an um, interesting question to say the least. Um, today's question mm-hmm. is brought to you by our DroneU community. Uh, and we've got some trainings coming up. Obviously the world is open, thank the Lord for that. And uh, we've got some trainings coming up. We've got a training in Dallas in May. We've got a training in Denver in June. Uh, so if you are looking to gain confidence in operating your drone, flying in close proximity, going through our obstacle course, maybe you want to earn that educational rate on your insurance, then you're not going to want to miss that flight mastery training. Um, now we've got some questions coming up this week that are, are in regards to mapping. And I would say humbly that a lot of these questions would be asked and answered during the mapping class to provide a really comprehensive, uh, long form kind of answer. And so if you're considering getting into mapping, whether it's construction, progression reports, all the way up to, you know, 3D stuff, I think that you'll find that course extremely useful. Um, That course is really built for people in construction, in roofing inspections. It's also great for quarries. It's great for, um, you know, earth movers. It's great for, you know, communications, uh, mapping and inspections, really anything photogrammetric. It related, it's going to be covered in that class. So check it out, thedroneu.com. When you get to that homepage, uh, if you go down to the little wheel, you'll see the events uh, icon, click that icon, and you can sign up for upcoming trainings. There is only one seat left in the our big experience training, which is kind of replacing the fly-in for this year. Uh, and if you've considered joining us for that experience training, I recommend signing up now because there's one seat left. So uh, all that to be said, let's uh, hear this funky question. <laughs> hey Paul. Hey Rob. My name is Adam. I have a P4P V2 that I haven't flown for almost two years, just collecting dust on my shelf. I'm about to dust her off and get her back up in the air. I'm just curious what your pre flight maintenance checklist would uh, be like for a situation like this. I'm going over the different firmware and software applications, updates to checking the batteries and different compass calibrations, etc. Just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks, Adam. Appreciate the question. Askadroneu.com is where he sent that question in. It's where you can send yours in. And uh, always appreciate it, by the way. Um, by the P4 way. P4P V2 sitting on the shelf. You don't hear it. He's got something valuable there. Anyways, you he, were going to say. He does. And actually, to the point of value is that one piece of news before we get into answering this question is, you know, we hear that the Phantom is coming off of the production line. So those drones, once again, will have significant value. And who knows, Rob, maybe they'll end up like used cars and go up in price 50%. We'll see. Man, if there's a drone that does, it probably will be that one. Right, right. Uh, I know a lot of mappers who would like to get their hands on his drone. Um, Now, in response to his question, uh, I just want to allow our members to know there is an updated pre-flight checklist uh, that was added to the site. If you're a part of the props program for drone teams and programs, you have an even more robust uh, pre-flight checklist, which I think a lot of these things that we're about to talk about, I believe would be uh, on there. 
Um, but that said, uh, let's take this bit by bit. So the bit that I didn't want to forget, which I'll just hit first is, you know, one thing I think that we overlook all the time whenever we pull, uh, we'll call it an old rusty drone, even though they're not rusty, uh, <laughs> off the shelf is would you want to make sure that your batteries all around are in good, healthy condition? I mean, that's kind of why I was talking about that story with Tom that he brought up in the community this weekend that the, the, so there's three rules of takeoff that we teach here at drone you. And that third rule is the control sweep and battery test because it's the only true way that if you're going to know whether you'll have a safe flight or not. And with Tom, you know, he's taking over a drone program and they had a bunch of batteries that were in storage. And sure enough, I think he said three or four of them were bad. And real bad. Yeah. They yeah. were toast. I yeah, guess it yeah, doesn't yeah. matter. It's either bad or not, but. It's either catastrophic or not bad at all. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, no, I'm, I'm kidding. There, There is definitely a scale there. Um, but that said, don't forget to, to, you know, charge that remote battery. And as you're doing any firmware and software upgrades on that, um, monitor the, the remote just to make sure that the battery is good on that. I feel like that's the one thing we all forget all the time when we're pulling a drone off of the shelf. On top of that, you know, one of the questions he asked, is what are the kind of the protocols for for checking the bird um, you know anytime that we get a new drone or we do a firmware upgrade we want to do an IMU calibration flat surface inside preferably a cool area um, and I think in this case it's a good idea to do that IMU calibration as well um, because you just don't know what state it's in now in regards to firmware and in regards to uh, firmware this is where we might see a deviation of workflows because there's a group of people, myself included, who have hacked their phantoms to not have um, that DJI GeoZone limitation so that you can essentially fly it. Uh, if you do have a authorization in controlled airspace, you're able to use that drone. If that is the case, if they're in this group and then they've used something like drone hacks to hack their bird and get that function functionality, then obviously you would not want to do a firmware upgrade, right? Because it'll wipe what you did and exactly. kind of reset it. Yeah. Now, if you are on an older firmware already and you're considering hacking your drone, I would look at drone-hacks.com and see where your firmware addition is in relation to the table of firmwares because there's only certain firmwares that you can essentially downgrade the firmware to do the hack. So for this guy, I would say check what firmware level you're on, go to drone-hacks.com, see if you're able to do the hack, if you want to, uh, obviously. Um, and if not, and you're just ready to upgrade, then obviously doing a firmware upgrade will be good. You gotta charge your batteries anyway to fly. You gotta have a, a decently charged battery to do the firmware upgrade anyway. And I would say a lot for an hour or two. I know normally it doesn't take that long, but sometimes it can take a long time after the drone has not been flown for lengthy periods of time. Mm -hmm. um, don't forget to upgrade your DJI Go 4 app as well. Uh, I think that's going to be important in any mapping applications. Make sure that you update or any third-party applications like Litchi, update those as mm -hmm. well. Obviously, he's going to want to do a compass calibration once he gets to wherever he is flying to. Right. I can't tell you how many people I've seen do a compass calibration bad, like poorly. I mean, just doing it wrong. Yeah, just straight up wrong. Yeah. Um, and it, it's very important to do that the right way. So that said, he'll do his compass calibration. Um, and then, you know, this is where you get into the rules of takeoff because when you've had batteries that have been in storage for that long, the chances of them actually still working are fairly low. Yeah. Um, and so with that battery it, test- They may not even power up. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, 100%. With that battery test, too, when you perform the rules of takeoff, first rule, into the wind, second rule, drone and pilot have the same orientation, third rule is we're going to do that control sweep and the battery test. When you do that battery test, this is really pushing the battery to its quote-unquote limit to make sure that it's a healthy battery and you can fly around without having a last-minute voltage error or a loss of power because if you do have a loss of power, it will be a catastrophic accident no matter what um, and that said it's so important to do that battery test just like Tom did mm -hmm. on his stored batteries they weren't his batteries they were the company's batteries right and uh, I think it's really important to do that um, 
If you're a member, you can take the operations course where we clearly detail how to perform those rules of takeoff and the rules of landing and uh, avoiding emergency situations. I think that'll really help him in this case Mm -hmm. because there's a reason I have pilots go through rules of takeoff every single time they take off at Flight Mastery. It's to burn that habit in because it's really the only truly safe method of determining whether you will or will not have a safe flight. So is there no apparatus piece of equipment that you can use no. to test them? No, because what you're trying to do is essentially have peak amperage draw from the battery and make sure that the battery can sustain that without failing. Yeah. Um, and obviously you're looking to see if the battery depletes below a certain point, which again, if you're a member, you can check that out in the operations course for that special number. Mm-hmm. So, I'm sorry, did you have something else? No, go ahead. I was going to ask a couple questions with regards to the drone itself. Would would it make sense to maybe fire it up and just let the motor spin inside without the props on just to kind of see how it behaves? I think that's definitely a good idea. I mean, you know, again, part of that pre-flight checklist too talks about spinning the motors to make sure they're free of debris. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, when you turn the drone on, you're going to hear that doot, 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 doot. That's actually each ESC beeping to showcase that they're working properly mm-hmm. as the flight controller just pushes like a half a volt through each one. Okay. So, uh, so that's not a bad thing to do. Maybe no. what about maybe the air stuff blowing it out? Are the props going to be okay after two years? Um, well, I think that depends on how many hours he's got on the props, but that's a, that's a great question as well. Honestly, and we've said this, you know, new dozens of times on the show, but props are like analogous to tires on your car. They're the thing that have to be replaced the most frequently. And you're never going to regret replacing your propellers because, um, depending on how much flight time they do have on them, that UV coating does start to wear, the blades begin to track. You can even hear it as the decibels and the frequency or the sound that you hear from those props changes over time. And so I honestly would say just replace them anyway, because then you just start from a safe point. Might as well. But that also goes into another point, which is, you know, on our drones, we're lucky that most of the screws, the body, the frame, everything, it tends to wear pretty well, but it still doesn't hurt to just check the screws on the landing gear to make sure that everything is tight and uh, everything is, you know, Mm -hmm. as it should be. I will warn and say don't over tighten the motors, uh, the screws that are around the motors, because doing that can actually cause the screw to protrude into the stator of the motor and causing it to fail. Um, in regards to your question on the dust stuff, if he spins those motors and he he hears any like crackling or any debris, yes, he's going to want to spray those motors out with some duster. Um, that will really help as well. Um, but when it comes to this, I mean, it's really about charging up all your batteries, updating firmware if that's his choice he wants to go, Mm -hmm. you know, conduct the IMU calibration. I think turning it on inside, letting the motor spin to make sure you don't hear any weird sounds is good as well. And uh, yeah, I mean, other things on the remote that might have been overlooked is just ensuring that your antennas are still in good shape and that you're still... um, you know, able to use that remote and sustain the remote on the battery. One thing to consider on these older remotes is you might want to go into the settings once you plug your phone or tablet into the remote and turn off charge from the remote because on these older remote batteries, uh, that might deplete them much faster than if you are not charging your tablet or screen or apparatus, whatever you're using. So that's another thing to consider. But again, I will just say, I think a good recap on the operations course would be good for this guy uh, just to go through kind of those things that we've talked about because there's a reason that we burn these rules into all of our students. It's because they work. And these methodologies have been proven over time. So I think his biggest concern is battery health here. Uh, I would not expect those batteries to work, frankly. Uh, And I would just go out and buy new ones. Yeah. So don't buy used batteries. Don't buy third-party manufacturer batteries. Don't recommend that. And you can still pick up OEM Phantom oh, yeah. batteries, right? We just bought a couple a couple weeks ago, remember? That's true. Yeah. yeah. That's true. Okay. So, cool. Well, I mean, really, it's uh, pretty straightforward. It is. It's just, just check the boxes and, and make sure. Pretty much. Batteries probably is the biggest deal. 
Yeah, I, I I think that that's a safe assumption. And I will say, if you got an old Phantom 4, not a Phantom 4 Pro, and you want to get rid of it, DroneU is looking for some new burner drones for our students to crash on purpose. <laughs> yeah, please let us uh, know. So let us know. We're on purpose accident. Yeah. Accident purpose. We're, we're on <laughs> burner number 22 now, so <laughs> we could use some more. What does uh, that tell you about how much fun the flight mastery class exactly, is? Exactly, <laughs> yeah. I'm actually stoked for that. I'm stoked for the experience training, too. It's going to be a blast. It is going to be a blast. Yeah, so It is. Looking forward to it. Anyway, if you have a question, go to AskDroneU.com. It's going to do it for us today. If you're considering upping your confidence or elevating your flight experience, consider becoming a DroneU member. And if you're involved in a team or a drone organization, check out DroneU's and the only industry platform built to support teams and manage them, create uh, you know clear systems throughout everyone on the team, clear systems of communication, equipment, care, etc., and be able to manage that all from one dashboard. That's our props program, which stands for professional Reliable Operators Practicing Safety. You can check it out at propsflightschool.com. That's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You. (laughs) 